This is the loop cam. They don't know about this yet, but they gonna know in a second. This is the loop cam. Live and direct. <laughs> D say what up? It's the word. For me, Dio the producer. Y'all already know who that is. You know what he's doing. If y'all don't know where we're at, y'all gonna know soon. Just know we dream chasing. We got We got Han Chilius over there. We got B22. And we got my nigga Chop Cheese, nigga, cause we're in New York, nigga. Say something, say what up, gang. You know what the vibe is, you know I gotta go see my guy. Okay. Okay. The chop cheese. Chop cheese. I think they're recording right here. Now I'm recording, y'all recording me. What's good, bro? What a doggy. What's good, bro? Dior. Dior. What's good, bro? How we doing? Cool. How was your ride in? It wasn't bad. Three and a half, four. That's not bad. Get comfortable. Fucking. You smoking here, right? Obviously. What color do I want? Green, blue. You know what I mean? That's cool, man. Straight, bro. I just the work is getting old, bro. You almost done with shit? Yeah. Yeah, you graduate, man. This shit's crazy. Why did you know? I'm about to make sure. I'm about to make sure in my phone. I don't care if you didn't ask. I'm telling you anyway. It makes me feel and shit. Yeah. It just makes sense. <coughs> You gotta speak that pain. Yeah, it's a good too. I had to, I had to learn. You can't, you can't talk about that all the time. <coughs> Niggas don't want to be sad all the time. But it's like your pure emotion, though. That's, that's what, what I'm that. saying. But sometimes you gotta do it because that's how you truly feel, and you gotta let that out. Exactly. It's legit therapy sessions. I was actually thinking about doing like an EP or a tape or some shit and just naming it like the, like literally therapy sessions and having it like kind of super like not super in my feelings but you know. Is that what you feel like when you're recording? Yeah, literally. Like it's like an actual like session. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least if it's not everything, it's like I'm gonna if I'm gonna speak on something, I'm gonna speak about it. And like, like it just happens to be like I'm doing it on a beat. Yeah. But yeah. That's what really kept me in the That's what makes you genuine, though. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We was on campus, bro, two years ago, bro. Flies by, dude. Legit like this. We blinked. And we Like fucking this. I've only recorded um when I came out here for my birthday. Me and Dior and um two of my other guys. My guy um Dude shot him and my guy um Big Keith, that's my big bro. We came out here to shoot a video and shit, and we ended up just setting up the um the equipment in the B and B. Oh shit, yeah, yeah no, so it was still live. Smooth, bro. Yeah, so like this you is got, my you getting the vibes still, like you still out here, like yeah, yeah like, you're it's supposed cool. to be a good time out. No, here, it's like. wavy, but like we was driving over here, I was just looking out the window like a low ass kid, like like, a tourist. <laughs> like damn, bro. Well, you like, know you know you're on like the tourist shit when you cause like yeah, you cause like gazing out the window. I've been out here like a lot of times cause I feel me out here, like so we would always come out here every like. Every now and then, bro, but just the fact that I'm out here, like, on business, doing something that, like, I love, bro, like, I'm chasing a dream, like, I'm out here for that. Yeah. Like, it's just... It's a different drive. It's a different it feeling, can, like, it's like, that's what I did it. Shout out to New York City, man. But how, how's, New York? how's life been treating you? Life's been interesting, bro, since the last time we spoke. We was here. Two, two years? years? Two years later. Yeah. Two years later. Two years, we're at Nickel. Still locked in. We was at Nichols, now we're, in, now we're in New York. From Nichols to New York. Just getting, big, just getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> I gotta be the kid. I gotta be shit from, from Nichols, Nichols to, to New, New, York. New York. That's hard, but yeah, no, bro. still putting in work, dude. Shit's been smooth, bro. A lot of ups and downs, bro, like like any other, anything else, but. Of course. Shit's been, shit's been turning up now, bro. No bullshit, shit's been working. So would there be anything you would do differently looking back from two years ago? Nah. You keep it all the same. Yeah. Some real shit though. Just people be like, after living through a certain period of time, they're like, ah, oh, I didn't really fuck with this person. I didn't like this move, whatever. But it's you're like sticking to it. You're like, we oh, have that, you know. You like you I have those. Like I have. I wish I didn't do that. I wish I fuck with this person. But it's like, if I didn't, who's to say I wouldn't be here? Where you are right now? You know, shit could shit could be different if I didn't do make that mistake or mess with that. You know. Mm -hmm. So it's like, nah, I'll keep it all the same. Like God got a plan, so. If all that, if all the, all the bullshit's in that plan, then I gotta take it. No dead. Some real shit. Um, how has your music evolved since you started? Like, what do you think has driven that change? Um, just trying to keep it going for real. Like, what, like, what kept it going was just that I was using it as therapy. Like a lot of people kind of just make yeah, music to make we it. Just yeah, we were just talking about it off camera, but like just I use it as therapy. Like everybody go through their own shit and they cope differently. And music just so happens to be my way of coping. So you don't realize till you start getting older. Like damn, like there's some shit I want to express, like get off my chest. And when you yeah. really do, like you just feel better as a person. Mm -hmm. And you like connected to your music a lot more. Yeah, it like for what I first started, I could say just like listening to the music from back then. I was not, I wasn't doing it a lot, but I just know myself, like, I was trying to talk about stuff that I thought people wanted to hear, mm -hmm. versus what it's like, I think that what they needed here. Would, would you say, like, they were, like, lying to themselves? I wouldn't really say that, but I, I wouldn't really say they was lying to themselves, or I was lying to them, but I was just trying to, I was just trying to fit what was going on. I wasn't too comfortable in being my own lane yet. I was still trying to, trying to fit the. That goes into like the, the, the image, you know. Not, not really that, but like, you know what I'm trying to say. Like, I was trying to fit the. Like a different, like, not persona. I was trying to like get a, in the lane. Yeah. Like, like, I was trying to stay look. in the lane. Yeah. So like, speaking of which, like, um, as you know, like, rap music's been changing a lot. It's been shifted, and like, there's a lot more rappers doing features on like country music. And like pop music, Hell with yeah. like this new shift, how do you see yourself shifting with it? I think it's gonna be an easy shift, just because I genuinely like listening to that music, anyways. Like I feel like a lot of a lot of rappers and a lot of artists, they're quiet they're about like, like what they like, listen to. Like, yeah, okay, like they'll be listening to some like some shit you wouldn't even. Yeah, be bro. Like, like I seen them, um, but they won't. They won't say it. They're like, yeah, oh, they're I, like, no. I don't. I don't. That's, like, that's fine, bullshit. bro. It's music. Exactly. Like it's just art. It's all just art. Just because I make this type of music, I'm in the hip hop rap genre. I still listen to R and B, country, uh, cri uh, Christian contemporary music, like all that. That's all. It's whatever. It's whatever's providing your time soul. Time you feel like. Hell, you know that on that bar song. Everybody in the bar gets tipsy. They were playing that in the living room. That's song. They were playing that. They were playing it out there before you guys came, and I was like, I just oh, my, yeah. When I was that's waiting, that's that shit. That shit. That's so that like, shit. Yeah, in, a, in a world full of trends, how do you stay true to yourself and your like artistic vision? Well, one, 
like the people I have around me, they keep me grounded. And they keep me, feel me focused. So it's like, I could only lie to myself so much if I was trying to do that because I got they people in my court that's gonna be like, bro, what are you doing? Like, that shit don't make sense. Bro. Yeah, that, that's not you, bro. Like, uh, like, that's not how you move, bro. Tighten up. And then it's like, just being you, bro. Like, just not being afraid to be you. Like, that's really it. Just be confident in what you're doing and what you got going on. You can be straight. That's how I look at it. How has music? How has making music contributed to like your personal growth and uh, like your self discovery? What? Making music like I don't want to make it like sound ex like, as extreme as it saved my life. Because feel me like I was. I have a lot of great like adults in my life. You feel me? So. I don't want to say I was going to be straight regardless because I'm going to have to work hard to be straight, but I, just like in you feel me? Else, I have a good support else. system. Like, I have a good foundation. Backing you up. But, like, not to say I can't make my own decisions to, if, to like, self-destruct if I wanted. So, like, music was just, like, literally, like, therapy. Like, that can be a tough thing for a lot of artists being self-destructive and, like, they got something going, they got a wave going, oh, yeah. they got a trend going, and, and they, they stop. Just, they just stop. stop. Yeah. You just have to you just have to just just really believe in what you got going on. Even if you do go in that slump, you still have that drive to be like, alright, I'm going through the slump because of whatever. I yeah, know like, I'm I'm gonna get out of realize it. Realize the yeah. problem, yeah. fix it, yeah. Yeah. fucking move on. And it's like you also just you just gotta make what you got going on, like you just gotta make that shit better for yourself. Like, for example, I was um I can't really speak about it too much because it's still open, but I had caught a case last year around this time, and I had got kicked off of school, like off of campus. So I was like online, but you feel me? Anyone's gonna look at that? You feel me? You feel too great after. I was like, I was, I, I felt like I lost everything, like, like. That happening was like a domino effect. Yeah, like I was just one year left in school. Yeah, but I'm, I'm losing. You're like y'all. And, and when that shit yeah. happens, like you can't see that. Like as much as you want to, you can't see down the line. Like fuck. Like how's yeah, this shit bro. gonna play out? Like what the fuck? Like you gotta just make something crack. And now you're back in school. Yeah, bro. A year later, I'm back in school. Sure, like she's about to get dismissed. Hopefully, and pray to God pray that to it God, does. Bro. It's like I just, head down I just shit, bro, got my ass in the studio, bro. I was in the studio two, three times a week, bro. That shit don't stop. That should not be a, like should not be the reason why you stop. Bro. Yeah, but like, I'm, I'm dead ass going broke, like nigga. I got I got, got, fit, I got a pay deal, bro. He's gonna <laughs> hold me down, but it's still a business, bro. So, but well, fuck it. I believe this dude, fifty dollars, bro. Bro, hold me down. That's, that's niggas. So how do you hope your res your oh, music sure, resonates with your audience? I'm good, bro. Say that again, my fault. How do you hope your music resonates with the audience? Um, Cause you're like you're very true. You're very true yeah. in your music. You're very like into I'm you. And you're very thank specific. you. Yeah. Appreciate it. I just hope they will like. It's just a song that like they able to put on whenever, bro. Do whatever emotion, whether you're happy. I got a song for that. You sad? I got a song for that. In your bag, I got a song for that. Try to go get some money. I got a song. Oh, yeah. Anything like. I just, I just hope it's as, it's as relatable as possible with them because I can't speak about every specific situation that goes on because it's life, bro. Like, there's a lot of shit that goes on, but I just try to make it like as real as possible so it does connect. And as everyone's like going through shit, like. Yeah. Your audience and uh, obviously that, like um, everyone who supports yo, you, they like switch up they the find tempo, the like, true like, liking and like, like meaning in you. Like they they listen to that, like they hear that. So like being able to speak that and like really think about that when you're making your music too, it makes you so much more genuine. Yeah, because it's just like it just shows that they're listening and that that they they're really tap in. Yeah, yeah, like they like they care to they give a fuck to go and listen to it because it's like he could say something that that I I relate to. <laughs> I want to go back and like, I want to add that, play it again, and show my people, and play when I'm crying. I love this feeling. Like the I, I, they just they heard that. Yeah, they're, they're like, like damn, man, I feel that. Run that shit back, I'll dick. Cause I be doing that shit with the artists, with my guys, bro. Industry niggas, bro, all that, bro. Bro, and you like one thing about you though, you're not scared to to perform, like to go out there, like really, like, bro. Yeah, it, it, it could be five people. Know. It could be five fifty. It could be five hundred. Yeah. Give me fifty thousand, bro. You gonna give everybody the same energy every time? Bro. Nah, yeah, I definitely. That 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 confidence came from when I was just younger, just kind of always doing shit. Like when I was younger, like in elementary school, we, we would put on like school shows or whatever each grade, like in music class, and I would always end up being like. I don't want to say the, the stars. They like loose back up. But they'll be like, the little, little, little <laughs> dancing and doing 
jumping around and shit. Like, who doesn't want to watch that, bro? Exactly, bro. You feel <laughs> me? But it's like, face. but even then, like, when I first started performing, I was nervous as shit. Like, the first few times, I had to get drunk. It was 2022. Your heartless was already out. Yeah, redo that. Have you performed anything yet? I can't remember if you have. I think well, I did a right when we first. Because I know you've done. I a think I did a few. Yeah, right? it has. You, you, you did stuff at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I performed at all the major schools in Rhode Island, in Rhode Island like Providence, URI, RWU. How'd you get hooked up with that? Just people going there. The connection. Bro. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, like like at first, shit. like like URI, my my boy Riz, bro, Roshan, bro, he was he was um in a he was in a I don't. He was, I don't know how to say it, I'm blanking right now. But he was in a group, he was in a group. Yeah. It was called Bond, I believe. And they just, and they help like, just put on like, they do a lot of stuff on campus. Yeah. But one thing they did was put on like, performances and stuff. And he, he's a he's a big supporter of mine. So he was like, yo bro, like, there's a fashion show. I'm about to put, I'm about to tell him to try to like, you feel me, try to make that work. And at first it was a green. I, I went over there, did my thing. In the fashion show over there, like I did Roger Williams first, and you and um in, Ro in Rhode Island, my boy Ron put me onto that. And the URI was Riz, and that shit was crazy. Like like our dip, like Roger Williams was crazy. The URI was crazy, bro. Like those were like I think a thousand people there, bro. Like no, I'm not gonna if, lie, like, bro. If you're an artist at school, especially if you're going to school, don't be stupid. Like don't waste your time. Like yeah, there's bro. connections to be made, and like just from doing that, how many how many performances do you think that was all together? Like from then until now? Yeah. yeah. Like at a school. Like just school performances? Yeah. More than 10. That's like 10. I've been more than 10. That's 10 different times you got to go out there, like. Put yourself really out there. Put every, like, yeah. Ex I get the experience behind it. So, like. Yeah. Don't be gatekeeping it. Like, get out there. Like, you gotta do it. You gotta do it, bro. Just do it. Just show. Show. You gotta show face. Forming is hard, bro. Of course. It's it's hard to get up on stage and, and be you in front of everybody. That's just hard, bro. I be having to take shots and shit before. Now, not so much. But before, hell yeah, just do it, bro. When you get it done and it's over, you're gonna be like, nah, I did that shit. It was well worth the time. Like, it was well worth the time. Those first, those those first few times, like on a on a big ass stage like that. I was, but I had to really just push through and do it. Like 100, 200 kids there probably. Like do a high. He was at a college, so like for, like for, you, for you definitely got decent crowds. Yeah, there, right? for for the URI fashion show, that shit like there was probably like I don't want to say a thousand and like exaggerated, but there was probably like close like probably like six seven hundred people in there. Yeah, like sure. adults, students. Every day, every day. Yeah, but that shit was active. Damn. Roger Williams, like I did URI a few times. Roger Williams once or twice. Providence once. Um, I forget and then, what else. And then I did like um, Bridgewater State, Nichols, of course. And while you're doing the schools, like you don't know who you're gonna run into, like backstage. Like, nah. Who's gonna who saw that performance? They're like, yo, yeah. like, I'm a I, I'm a club promoter, or whatever. Like that's how I got the here, like, and, that's how I got the um, the Bridgewater State show. Now when you did the Crazy. show, in, um, I've been doing like clubs and shit too. Yeah. You show that when you did the show at Nichols, did the, like administration ask you, or did you go to them with the idea? Um, those those performances were like put on by like MOD, and like all like the yeah. So they like they picked the people. That they no, follow. yeah. So it was kind of like they picked it. Like I was like, yo, like it was like we're putting on a performance. Do you want to perform? And it was, and I was like, sure. Like you feel me? Like those well, are my friends to, asking like, me. They trying to get people out too. Like people yeah, to get the, out socialized. Yeah, like, like, no, it's get... funny because the one like the last time Nichols did a Nichols sh music show was they did it last year and then the year before that but before then they did it five years ago and when i came in as a freshman i was like starting to like realize like not realize that i want to make music but i wanted to do it like seriously so i was always like yo like i wanted like i want that to be a thing like like i'll, I'll help to put it together whatever yeah not for sure it matter. but yeah and then they put the show together and i already did yeah. So many shows, so I'm thinking like, oh yeah, like that shit just got announced. They're probably gonna ask me away for my email. Yeah. No bullshit, they didn't ask me, bro. Nah, <laughs> they didn't. Oh when it came, they when didn't it, ask me, bro. How is it different compared to like, say, so you performed at Nichols? Obviously, uh, you knew a lot of people there when you performed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. When we you do. perform at another school, like, the, was the feeling different? Yeah, for sure. It's just. Um, performing at Nichols when like everybody there they either know me or know of me and then they would bring their friends and stuff too so the crowd would be bigger but it was it was more like 
a homie feeling. Cause like they're singing along. Yeah, that you want, that's, how, that's how you want to start out. Yeah, too. like it's, feel me? Like, it's cause love. like that, I had to get my confidence. Exactly. Out. I'm, I'm not about to start off on a stage where nobody knows me, bro. Yeah, like Cause the, calling. everyone's sitting there just watching, <laughs> just looking. But then you got a few people. Then your next show, they know the then songs. Really, you know what you're like, doing. Judging, they they turn like other that. people up. And it's crazy. The Roger Williams show, bro. After the show, I was heated, bro. Like, like after my like my performance, I was heated because like everyone was kind of watching. Bob had a little. I didn't think no one was in tune, and then my boy, um, do shot him. Shout out to him. He was like, "Yo, like, you actually did great, bro. Like, people were watching and they were in tune. Like, yeah. you like want them to do that? Yeah, yeah, they don't. You don't want to see people talking, like, like, like on their phone. Or yeah, some shit. they were really yeah. just watching you. Yeah. So like, and at first, like, that was my first big, like, yeah, big show. Like, first, that. You're like, oh, I'm getting hyped. So I'm like, like, fuck, bro, I'm chips. That's the other thing, you know, oh, oh, it's to concerts bro. differently too, especially when it's someone they don't know. Like when I've been to a concert and say like, oh, you know, the, the, people, like the people who start off, I don't know them, but if I like them, I'm sitting there and I'm just listening to them because I want to hear what they have to say. Mm -hmm. I don't know their music. But, but they like, sound good, so I'm like, I'm focused on that shit. And I literally had so to, kinda how I had to put myself in that. Like, if I was sitting there watching somebody, and I didn't you know I want to be entertained. I want to be entertained, but I'd rather me like this, damn, yeah. than me on my phone. Cause it's like, I'm not, this thing is ass. That's what I'm saying, you entertain, you're not really <laughs> yeah, phone, like, you paying attention. For real, bro, but yeah. So what do you hope your musical legacy will be? And the guy, like, looking way down the line, like, the grand scheme of things. I just want, at the end of all of this, obviously, like, I want to be, like, the biggest that I can be, like, me and my people, if y'all go up. But my legacy, I just want to, I just want to be, like, Luke Woods makes, like, great music, like, 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 every song, like, I can find something and, and take from it. Yeah, take like, away from it. I want to, like, like really I'm trying to make timeless pieces. Like, obviously, I'm going to make the songs that's lit, like the Slizzy shit and all that. And, no, and some of those songs can be timeless, too, because like, we can play them just 20 years from now and be like, still be like, hey, remember we used to do this? Remember we used to do this swim move? Like, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I just want to make, I just want to make, it's timeless music, bro. Like music that people will always remember. Like nah, like he forced it. it. Like nah, he forced it on this. Even if it's an old ass song, a brand new song, like twenty years later. That's how I am with music that I was listening to back in like 2017. I, I don't hear it for a little bit. It'll come on and I'm like, oh shit, yeah, like, oh, like shit. Yeah, like, perfect example. About this shit. Smart, yeah, like perfect yeah. example. Drake's Pound Cake. Yeah, oh, pound cake for yeah, yeah, bro. Time is, bro. You, like, you don't listen to it for a while, but it comes on. You hit, Every time you hear that shit, you're like, damn, bro. Now I remember why. Yeah, now, now I know I why niggas was playing the fuck out of this song. Like, just like that, bro. Nah, dude, but from, from two years ago to now, like, the growth, like, everything you've done is just, it's just gone up. Like, you might not, bro, I don't I know if you see it, you believe it, but, like, from someone else's standpoint, like, seeing the growth that you have. I kind of like, seen it in real time, it's like, this shit's crazy, bro. Like, like New York is only four hours away. People try to downplay it, but now, nah, like, I'm out here in New York, like, doing what I like. Oh, you don't understand till you come here. Like, you this don't is, understand. This is wild, bro. Kind of open. I be seeing studios like this, like, in, in Brooklyn, around the city, but I'm in New York, bro. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> like, come on. I'm man. from Brooklyn, bro. This shit's hard, bro. Like. I'm doing something right, I think. Uh, I'm trying. Shout out to our people, Acosta Park. Oh, Thank yeah. you guys. Yeah, shout Bruno. out, bro. Appreciate it, Bruno. Shout out, Bruno. Go with him. Shout out, Costa, get some bro. Get some. Get your fucking sessions in, right there. Yeah, this shit is hard. Uh, I'm definitely fucking with this, bro. Thank y'all again, bro. See you later, bro. Time back in with me, bro. I'm dogs, bro. You know. Love. We gotta do this shit in another two years. We gotta, we gotta make this every two years. Every two years. Every two years. This is hard. The progress up there. I had to bring my peoples with me this time. Yes, you did. Shout out my guy Dior. Guess he froze the right now. Uh, Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Yeah, but we gotta we gotta shout out the gang real quick. We gotta get everyone in. There. He's locked in right now. This is Dior. If you if you tapped away anything that I do, you know Dior's what you say. You already know. Real chop. Gang. You already know the vibes. It's Cuzzo sandbox shit. Yeah. Like. Real life babies. Niggas be saying that and be lying. I'm not about, I ain't about, I ain't about to do the other cousins, but real baby pictures real together. Baby. Real yeah. mud baby. Hunch out. I don't even gotta say too I much. Know, I know that we. I don't even gotta say know. too much about Hunch. <laughs> yeah, what he's doing right now. <laughs> That's Mr. Five, Mr. Talk Two.
This is the loop cam. They don't know about this yet, but they gonna know in a second. This is the loop cam. Live and direct. <laughs> D say what up? It's the word. Feel me, D O the producer. Y'all already know who that is. You know what he's doing. If y'all don't know where we're at, y'all gonna know soon. Just know we dream chasing. We got We got Han Chilius over there. We got B22. And we got my nigga Chop Cheese, nigga, cause we're in New York, nigga. Say something, say what up, gang. You know what the vibe is, you know I gotta go see my guy. Hockey. Hockey. Need the chop chase. I think they're recording right here. Now I'm recording y'all, recording me, recording y'all, recording me. Fuck you talking about? Say what? That first bar, let me do it over. Of the whole song. This is real first person. This is wavy. I'm not gonna lie. Oh no. Yo, Hans. This is the Luke Can. Say what up? Live and direct, babe. Wagwan, manitos. Wagwan. Who you? State your shit, Nick. Hold on. Damn, it's your time, call. Damn. Who this nigga think he is? Say no more. Mm-hmm. Say no more. He's in here working. He look. He looks locked in. This face. I ain't gonna lie, this vlogging shit's kinda hard. This vlogging shit's hard. Yeah, I'm bringing the camera out ahead too. Fuck it. This shit's hard. Damn, niggas gotta have some scenes in here. Damn! I didn't even really pay attention when niggas walked in. Yo, bro, this is the Luke King. Say what up, gang. He's got the key. You know, shit open. Okay. Oh. Nice ass. Some shit like that. Let me close that. I'm over here touching shit. Do you think Luke took the camera? Yeah, he took it. Bro. It's really rap addict type shit two years later, bro. Oh, y'all found me. Oh, just vlogging himself with our camera. Oh, y'all found me. <laughs> yeah, I found you, bro. Still been King. spotted. Oh, y'all found me. Let's go, bro. Party yeah, y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't ever been on this Mark side. Too. Oh, you're yeah, actually, we, we always been on this side. Matter of fact, I'm about to interview y'all. Let's come in here. Come over here. The rules are fucking changed. Rules have changed. You see this, dude. You see this. Yo, bro. Matter of fact, I'm about to show you where we're going. Man. Hey, man. Oh! The fan almost took me out. Come on, dog. Every time you come. Come on, dog. <laughs> I got a question for you, sir. What's good? Alright. Hmm. You're on the spot, swear. What is the question I got for you? Where do you see Rap Addict in five years? In five years, Rap Addict is gonna be self-sufficient. Yes, sir. We're gonna be doing this every day. Working with new people, like connecting artists together. Okay. Self-growth, fucking personal growth for us, like everything we, we wanted, bro. Okay. We're working, we're working just to go, go up. So like live past this. In okay. five years, we're gonna definitely take a step forward, but like, I even want to look like down the line past it, bro. Okay. We want to grow out of this. How are you? Bigger and better. Long past this. Bigger and better. Bigger and better. Not like that, you see. It's my turn. It's your turn, buddy. You Bigger thought you were better. safe? Uh, Bigger and better. You thought you were safe, mud? I know hmm. What has changed in the last year since y'all kind of took y'all step back? So I think probably the biggest change, which we've actually talked about recently, um, was just our failure to reach out to past clients. Okay. Like was our failure to continue business with clients we already had. Okay. So we're, we're out there looking for new clients when it's like we have a whole client base right here in mm -hmm. front of us with people we've worked with before. 
which they had come out with plenty of content for us to do something again. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they we asked, we asked to keep, uh, keep working with us. And we picked it up now. I mean, shit, we're here with you today. Um, no. We're doing something with Soloso soon. Yeah, we've okay. already done something with him as well. So, yeah, our failure was just not staying consistent with our own clients. We just tried to get more new ones instead of just building our relationship, our business relationship with our past clients and getting more content with them. Okay. So Let's I feel go. like that's probably the biggest thing. That, cool. that shit was, that was solid. Loud. That was loud. That was a solid dab. That was a fucking dab. Um, dog, but this shit's crazy. And if not, I can't drag on it, I gotta put that shit under me. I've been niggas, I thought that was in front of me. One more time. I'm laughing, niggas, I thought that was in front of me. I ain't new to this baby, I came with a plan. One more time. I ain't new to this baby, I came with a plan. I'm good, honestly. The music's been keeping me safe. Writing music since yeah, I can remember, uh, back like seventh grade. Uh, little remixes to uh, other ones. It's just some of my favorite songs and things like that. Yeah, do it just how you did and the then, last um, one. High school, I was kind of doing a, a little bit of the same because I met some more friends who were rapping. And then that's when um, I kind of got my first studio. So that influence in you. Exactly. Because that's like I said, like I was saying, that's why I got my first studio. Um, Experience because one of my friends had like a little studio set up at their house. So that's the best. He's like, you're right there, you chill with everybody, right. like you most comfortable. Like. Exactly. With all and everyone's putting out their best, like in the beginning, like they're literally. Trying, like, I'm with all my best friends, pretty much. We just all just fucking around, just making all kinds of music. And I put a song out high school, but it's not out of the world. But it's just in the water. Either. It was. I mean, yeah, I feel like I feel like when you first start off, at least you know, as it is for most artists, it's more like. You have more fun with it, right. and then as you really start to grow, like that's when you really start taking it more seriously. But then that's when people about get, people like start getting like confused, bro. Like <laughs> it's hard to keep that like fun and like just that like beginning flame to you. Right. Like. But then you know, life, life and it's just like this. everything else going through, I pretty much put it back down again until um, you know I find myself moving back to Rocky, right closer with my family. And I have an uncle who was heavy into rap, so he was always a big influence for me. So of course, he kind of—I'm pretty sure he was like the reason how me and my cousin got access to the um, studio. Because we have plenty of family members who are into music. One of one of my cousins were uh, was an engineer, was like my guy Dior right here, and it's just—it's just, it's all in the family, pretty much. So. That's what kind of uh, that's what kind of just led me back into it, and that's why I kind of grabbed and found my comfort zone. And I just was kind of just going from there, took off. That's why I really started putting out music in uh, 2021 or 2022. I think I dropped my first song. So when you like you after dropping like that first project that you said like well, like, high school. Yeah, I after, so after like dropping that, like realizing it wasn't like really what you like. How many songs did you make like in between that? Like, and then like what finally got you to be like, you know what, fuck it. Like, like with that little click, the little group that I was with, you probably made, I think maybe like five or six songs that I was on personally, but uh, it's like. It was just like, playing true. around, so none of them really <laughs> gained any like traction, in, so we kind of like, pulled, pulled back from it, and like I said, we kind of put it down, just kind of focused on finding ourselves, because you know, that's really what it was, especially for me. I really just had to find myself, and that's what opened up the stories. Yeah. And, like, that's how I just kind of gained my storytelling ability, my versatility, and just... That's the whole thing, that's what separates you from like, someone, like, the right. guy right next to you. So how like how do you define yourself as an artist and how has that like definition evolved over time? As an artist, like I said, versatile. Really just different. Like it's not like it, it might you could always find an artist that you could say I sound like and compare me to. 
but when you really listen, it's it's me. It's, 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 it's Taylor. It's like it's, it's like yeah, you might see that same color suit on somebody, but he don't fit the same. Yeah. It, it don't look the same. I rock it better. I just, don't do their homework. You hear it. You hear the difference. So, um, what do you believe is the purpose of yeah, music in, to take, in, like, in today's society? And what role do like, you want to play in that? What do you believe is the purpose of music in today's society? And uh, what role do you want to play in that? I feel like, because for me personally, as a consumer, music has always been in the Because we all consumers. Right. So it's always been an escape for me. It's like it's a different world. It's a different level of comfort. It can change your mood. It can get you out of different moods. It's like it's it's, it's almost like therapy. So like exactly. And my mother had asked me one time like because my boy Luke over here he's in school studying psychology. So she had asked me if I ever like wanted to get into something like that. And I said for me. The music is kind of like what I want to go into. Where I take that position, where I, take, where I can be that therapist, where I can talk to people through my music and, you know, attach to certain feelings and make people feel a certain way. Just because a lot of the shit, and a lot of the shit that I talk about and rap about is real personal. So, I want so to feel it. when you, um, obviously when you're writing your music, like you said, like, you get really personal with it. Like, you really want to like create an image, a message with your music. But what kind of like, what kind of drives that? Um, honestly, from being misunderstood my whole life, I feel like you know, I've always had issues communicating and you know having conversations with people and just you know things don't always you know like thinking on so your way. I felt like communication was like one of those really things for me. Just like. I've always just felt misunderstood. I couldn't really get my point across the way I tried to a lot. So I understand. Music has been that, that for me. And honestly, a lot of people have been able to attach <laughs> yeah, to yeah, me a lot more with the music. Like, despite whatever my relationship is with anybody, my music is like that one attachment where it's like everybody feels me, everybody appreciates that I'm that, doing it. And that goes into this next question is like, how, how has making music contributed to your personal growth and like understanding of yourself? It's literally done just that. It's literally taking me on a journey. It's like it's like growing your hair up and getting, getting dressed. Like it's, it's a journey. So it's just like through that, building that craft, watching it grow, it's you learn so much about yourself. You learn how everybody else did it, how they got comfortable. You learn why a lot of people quit. You couldn't keep going because you, you get into those modes too. You have writer block, and you just you doubt yourself. You just feel like, fuck this shit. What, yeah. what are we doing? I feel like that all the time. But I always then all I gotta do is just cut all my music. And that's you right back in your mode. Like you're right zone. back in that mode. Um. So, what advice would would you give to like an aspiring rapper right now, like that's trying to like get into this like industry or like business? I tell them, like any, like everybody told me, just keep going. I can't, I can't be the, I can't talk to you like Mr. Professor, like I know it all, like I've done it all, but through learning, from where I'm at, just keep going. Especially if you believe in what you're doing. If it's not a gimmick for you, if it's not just just a hobby, because it can be a hobby. Of if you if you really believe in it, then that's when it's gonna turn into something else. But if it's just something you're playing around with, like I was doing in middle school and high school, then you're gonna find yourself putting it down. Life, life is always life, and so you gotta find something that you're passionate about. Just, just stick yeah, to you that gotta love what you're doing because otherwise, like. What are you working for? Like, why are you gonna drain yourself out? Like, when you're not really doing what you love, like, you can't put like your full hundred percent into that. Exactly. It's like so. Like, when, that's what? why people say like, if you if you're doing something you love, it'll never be considered work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It'll never feel like work. Never feel like work. This shit never feels like work. No, I love coming down here. You gotta love shit. Like, you gotta love doing what you like. You gotta do, bro. And like. Same thing, bro. Like, just, just keep fucking working and doing that shit. Like, you don't know where you're gonna be in another two years, another four years, bro. I, I, I've you. been in behind the scenes seeing y'all grow too. It's the same thing. Like, just, just keep going, bro. Shit, bro. Yeah, bro.
Chapel. 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 Big things, big things coming. All right, and they gonna they gonna hear you. They gonna hear you. Right, so you so, so drop you drop a verse on um. Nah, he he's, he's punching on. Are you doing your own thing? This is yeah. He's doing his own thing on this, so I might be doing something. Get it, get it, get it. All right, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yeah. I sit by this bottle and pray for peace. No, we got no. I sit by this bottle and pray for peace. Alright, we're here with Dior, the producer. Yes, sir. How are you doing, bro? Nice to formally meet you. Nice to meet you. Let them know where you're from. Yeah, so I'm Dior, the producer. I'm from Hyde Park, Boston. For me. Just out here in New York, just making songs, you feel me? I'll be out here often, but yeah, just out here working. How long have you been uh, like producing for? Uh, I've been making beats for like eight years, no bullshit, since I was in like middle school, you feel me? But uh, I really started like taking my brand serious like a few years ago once like I, I was in college, like I was playing D1 football at one point and Feel me? I was I was a running back. Oh, yeah, so I was I was going hard with that, but like um, I was like also focusing on like expanding my brand, and, like because I was working with people in my city beforehand, but um, I really just didn't start putting myself out there until so, like by few expanding years ago. the brand. What do you mean by expanding the brand? Just like my face card, because like there was there was a while where I was sending people beats on Instagram and like. You know, like that's cool, but like it doesn't really get your name out there. I feel like, like it's 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 better to have like a an in person relationship with people. You feel yeah, me? Of course, you gotta show a face. Yeah. Do you uh, do you use YouTube at all to post beats? Um, nah. So <laughs> it's funny you ask that. I don't, I don't really post beats no more on YouTube because people started stealing them. Oh uh, yeah. I post like loot kits. I don't know if you know what that is, but um, like people can buy the. Like loose, like, it's like to use to use it. You can still be on Yeah, no, but when you start selling like your own like kit, right? yeah. Well, what the sample kits or loop kits? They're basically like melody packs. You feel me? Yeah. Because I make my own melodies, so like. I'll, and then you can base it off that melody. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I can I can send that to other producers. You feel me? Because like that way it's easier for me to to work with other people. Like there's people I've worked with that's like across the world, like other countries and shit, yeah. you feel me like i'm just sending them shit but like it's kind of crazy because like you can like you can expand your network now right i feel like in 2024 there's almost no limit to like what you to you not can do. be able to like yeah expand so like that's that's my mindset when i was like thinking of expanding my brand so that's one thing like i started taking serious but uh um, i feel like my main thing is just like going up with my city because I work with a lot of artists in my city and I drop projects with people. Um, I got my own project that's about to come up soon. Um, <coughs> stay in tune. So it's like everyone's like going over the beats that you've made. And then yeah, so so you know how Metro Boomin be dropping shit yeah, yeah. with like 21? Yeah, yeah. I, I do like like a collab <laughs> album like that, you feel me? Because I feel like nice a lot of, a a lot of producers don't really get their name out there like that. Because like, they're just like ghost producing basically, you yeah. feel me? But like, I like having my name. Like that's the second, the second <laughs> part of the song, like it all, yeah. like, you feel the me? beat's gotta go with like, and like words. once they once they're familiar with your tagging your your beats and like who you are you for me I, I just feel like there's no way you can lose like in my in my opinion at least because like the people I've worked with like they've all showed me like genuine love and like all the relationships you know, I have with people are, like, they come from something. I'm gonna punch in after that. Can you lower just a little bit? 
What was your, um, what are like some of your favorite projects you've done? Do it one more time. Alright, Now, what'd you say? What are some of like the favorite, your most favorite projects you've done? Ah, uh, shit. So, honestly, right now, I got like, like, I got singles out with people, but I have like an unreleased project I'm about to drop. Um, so it's about to have cool. Skrilla, Jake Critch, Core. It's got to be like a whole bunch of ones. Okay, he said Luke Blaze. I'm better ass. I need to make an appearance on that. Now, we going to have an album with those. Duh. Duh. That's just, that's just already, you know, already in the works. So, um. How do you balance an artist's vision with your own ideas and like expertise during like the production process? Um, the people I work with, I feel like they trust me, so that's like a really important part of the process. Cause if they don't trust like my view of like what I think is is good, like it might like clash and making like a good song. But most of the people I work with, like I don't have it too many problems. Like if they don't like something I do, like when I'm mixing or something, like they'll just tell me and I'll change it. But yeah. in terms of like creativity like, when know, making like, beats, like um, people usually just let me send them whatever, you feel me? And they'll go from there. Yeah. Like they'll, they'll ask me what they want, but you feel me? So um, what do you consider to be the most important aspects of like mixing and mastering? Shit, no bullshit. Just like listening to mad music, you feel me? Cause like the more music you listen to, you're gonna hear different mixes, different like flavors almost, you feel me? It's almost like eating at different restaurants. Like, you know how some people like have like a certain taste for like expensive ass food. Yeah. They, they know those fancy yeah. ass flavors, bro. That's how I feel as an engineer when I listen to music. Bro. Cause you listening to it like at a, you are listening to a different like, I don't know, like part of the song. Like you're not listening to like what? Like, I'm listening to like, you. Listening to like like I can break down beat, like, like every part of the beat. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. And the vocals and all that. So I mean, I feel like if you you are giving someone like not even like criticism, but like just like some advice, like it'd definitely be worth it to like to tune in like to what he's saying. Like, um, you nah, have one more? Nah, go ahead, go. Nah, I was gonna say um like. Where that really came from, like my confidence in that is just like working with other engineers. Cause I'm not gonna lie, I've been in lots of rooms with di like uh, lots of different engineers. Like uh, I've been in the studio with Core's engineers. Like I've recorded Jay Critch. Like it it's just been like mad shit. Like the people that have taught me how to engineer, like they showed me a lot. Like, you feel me? And they have like a lot of credibility on their side, you feel me? Like, yeah. People that have recorded for like mad industry artists, you feel me? But honestly, like it's just about having a good ear and working with your artists and having like a good um, uh, fair, like a good chemistry, you feel me? Uh, do you have like a preferred genre to work in or do you like working across multiple genres? I mean, shit, I mostly do rap, but you feel me? I, I be fucking with like R&B and like, like, like other trying shit to like, like a different style. Nah, no bullshit. Like, my dog Frank, he be he be doing the guitar shits. He be making heavy metal drills. So I guess you could say that's like a, a different yeah, kind of drum. Yeah. But like, we be cooking up shit like that. Uh, I got some shit with Fabio. It's like a guitar beat with with my man's Frank. Yeah, you feel me? And like, you probably always like. Listening in like deeply for like just crazy like something like sample or maybe like a sound that like you could use like you never know like something you could just hear it and be like you know I got like I can turn that into something yeah definitely and it's like honestly like when it comes to like making beats at least I feel like once I hear like all the elements to a beat or like how to remake it like that's when I really understand like like that genre I guess because like once you learn how to make one style beat like let's say I didn't know how to make sexy drill beats like I would I would sit down and listen to a sexy drill beat and try to break down each like instrument you feel me and that's how I would learn from there do you know how to play any instruments uh, yeah I'll be playing the piano a little bit you feel me um because I feel like that's what like there's probably people who want to like start making beats sure. and like get into it but they they probably feel like they, they need to like play an instrument or like nah, they won't be able to like it. learn on their like computer because can't you like necessarily use your keyboard as like a chord yeah you could do that too like no bullshit like i do a lot of shit like that you feel me but i i play the piano only to like like hear what i want like it's it's easier to like play what i want to hear yeah. 
if I like, cause I'm familiar with the piano, but like, you don't have to be familiar with the piano to make beats. Cause like, my FL Studio, like, I've seen people finesse like a symphony, <laughs> like, like Beethoven, like on the computer, doing the craziest bro. shit, like, yeah, bro, no bullshit. So like, with all these, like, obviously you've worked with a lot of. You want to redo that? Yeah. You've worked with a lot of hot artists, like, that are popping currently. Like, where do you see yourself going from here? How are you going to, like, build on top of that? I mean, shit, no bullshit. I'm in my own lane. Like, I don't, I don't want to, like, copy no one else. I don't have, like, any, like, you feel me? Like, I be fucking with, like, Metro Bloom and it produces like that. But, like, for me, no bullshit. I just, like... Like identify with my city and like the artists I work with, cause like I feel like that's where I get the most love and support. Yeah. So I feel like that's what's gonna push me the farthest. So just like helping out artists in my area get to that next level is like the most important thing to me. What do you think? Like, nah, go go ahead and. What do you think's making the most like noise? Like, where are you from? Shit, no bullshit. All my dogs here that that's with me is making noise, but you feel me? Like, there's a lot of heads in Boston. Um, like, I, I got projects with um, Wild Jizzle. I got a project with Michi Columbia. I got a project with Wave Capone coming up. Fucking put in work, shit. I got, I got mad shit. Um, what's the most valuable lesson you've learned like, in your career so far as a producer or engineer? As an engineer, I was just saying being ready. Like, there's been time. Like, my first session, I was in a, I was in a different studio, not something like this. It was like a little bit run down, you feel me? And the power went out, bro. My first session ever, bro. You feel me? You don't, you're like, that shit's gone. Like, what the fuck? Nah, it was, well, yeah, the shit that I recorded was gone, but like, that was the start of the session, you feel me? So, but. I was just like, I ain't know what to do, but I fucking, I, I switched the power and I got the power back on and all that shit, but like, you just gotta be ready for shit to go left, no bullshit, yeah. cause a lot of Any people second. might fold and if something like that happened, you feel me, like, yeah. like, you might get nervous or some shit, but like, you just really just gotta keep composure and just like, use your resources, cause like, I feel like I wouldn't have gotten as far as I've gotten without my resources. Like, when, so, when some shit goes down in the studio, I know I could call, bro, like, yo, like, what the fuck do I do? <laughs> like, yo, bro, you feel me? I ain't gonna lie, bro, it's kind of, like, just amazing to see you doing this and do Like, recording a song right now and constantly doing these cuttings while keep holding a conversation, an interview conversation at the same time, like, doing it for a long time. Yeah, bro, yeah, it just shows how, like, well experienced you are and immersed you are in it. That, like right like, now, it's like it's like second nature for you to do this. Like I'm looking at this, like uh, it's just the one. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. like I wouldn't know. It's, like I was saying, with like being ready, like yo, like <laughs> that's, it, it's like a good and a bad thing because you have to be ready for like an artist to be like, yo, bro, I need you to punch me in quick, right here, right there. Like yo, like Jay Critch recorded him. He he's recording with like industry engineers all the time. He probably got his go-to guys. You feel me? So like the way that he records, he wants that like yeah, as yeah. soon as he. Punch Consistency. If, if he messes up, he wants me to punch him right back in. Yeah. Like, so yeah, working with like that has kind of gotten you like tap down yeah. like this, where it's like second nature for you to just cut in, cut back, like cut out, come back in. Yeah, you feel me? It's just like it's second nature now. It's just like part of the job. You feel me? But like. In terms of mixing this shit, that's where like I get like my flavor because I get to add like my own touch and shit. Yeah. So like after countless hours like in the studio, like working with like completely different people, like what is advice you would give to an artist like when they're preparing for a studio session? Honestly, I would just say try to get with a producer if you can. I know like. I feel like getting with the producer is like a lost art now, but like hopefully like people will see what I'm doing and like hopefully like try to work with another producer and go up with him the same way I'm doing with my artist, you feel me? Cause I really think having someone else that ha like has like a different like view on your music, I guess, um, can help you get to the next level, you feel me? Easy, easy. I've been keeping it peace. I've been keeping it peace. I've been keeping it peace.
I'm just like, yeah, just like staring and watching him do this. If only we had like a camera like watching him do that as he's talking to us just to see how he's literally like doing it at the same time. Alright, we'll, we'll let you get back to this, but Dior, bro, thank you. I appreciate it, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Nah, no push, I'd be up here a lot, so like, bro, I'm gonna come back here with Frank, no bullshit, because I feel like y'all could be mad shit. Yeah, dude. Bro, he be, he be like, he needs like studio sometimes, no bullshit. And if y'all ever like, so we want to shoot some shit for some good ass artists. That's what we're trying to that's do. What that's what, that's what, that'll be like our first like real taste of like, No bullshit, like yeah, bro. Because he, he think, he's in Berkeley right now. Yeah. yeah, so he's, he's in school right now. But that's in Mass, right? Yeah, so it's in Boston. But hopefully, like, uh, like he, he be he be want to take trips like during his breaks. So hopefully next time we're out here. Yeah, definitely. Um, Oh, wait, it's the interview? It's the interview. Oh, I gotta be in this shit. No, fuck. Always center, center, center. I'm saying, yeah, you were real. If you was a real artist, you gotta have these headphones on the fucking earphones. Keep money with all time. All time. They never no die. Like, they never die. Yeah. They never, ever, ever. So how you been? What you been up to? I've been cooling it right now. Uh, I've kind of been like a rebuilding process because, you know, I, I believe before I dropped my EP in the beginning of this year, um, I haven't dropped music for like close to a year actually. Yeah, cause I was kind of like trying to reinvent myself. So like, I, I sound decent, but I wanted to make sure I sound like undeni like undeniable. Like people can't resist me. You know what I'm saying? So then I took a break, walked in with Dior here. But I had to walk in with him for like two years. I ain't gonna lie. Just for me. You know what I'm saying? Because you like having that connection with like one producer? Yeah. Like, when they sit, like for any artist that's starting out, don't just stick to like one, the first producer you find. Because I promise you, I went through like four. Like, and he was a fine, and the way I met him was so crazy. They, my friends called me out of nowhere and said, we're having a studio session, pull up. You know what I'm saying? And people, I wasn't even sure if I was gonna come. It just came. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's how it be. It was just like, yeah. time you yeah. find, like, expecting to play the first time. Literally. Literally. Everybody was fucking around. He was like, you want to record his own? I'm like, yeah. Record his own. Locked him right after that. Two years young. We got that, too. I can just feel it. I just have to, like, talk to him for a little bit. Really? Yeah, you feel the good connection. Oh, yeah. So do you have um, any musical influences or experiences that like, you? Um, yeah. Heavy, I want to say heavily. Uh, I would want to say my cousin Mike in Milano because to me developed a kind of a sound. I think I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Boston, Boston, yeah. Did he do like a side thing? Yeah, something that I'm believe in. Yeah, that's 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 and I was in high school. He's been in it for a grip. He's been in it for a He's like, had his own sound. And kind of like, I took that and like, the church sound. I also listen to like alternative music sometimes. Like, when I was younger. Like, 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 like growing up. Yeah, I don't know. Like Ref Fiori, that's probably like one of the few like real like heavy metal guys I listen to. You know what I'm saying? Like, like listening to that. Plus like the WWE theme songs. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. hell yeah. 
Those, bro, don't those, 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 Kind of the way you look up to your family, oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah doing the right same now. shit you do. So, oh yeah, so like oh, it's yeah. dope to have it's like in your blood. blood. Yeah, it's it's blood. Doing that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm playing him. Hey, man, uh, speaker knocker is an MO3. Yeah, yeah. 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 Those got both that right there. Yeah, those are the best. That can literally drink with Huntsville Pods on. Right there and there. That's a good mix, though. That's a good mm-hmm. mix. Um, how would you describe your music style and what sets you apart from artists in the Um, My music style is different. Like, and I don't mean like different, like as in like, oh, okay, like I'm doing the singing thing. Like, I feel like my flows and my, like, my riffs. Like a certain way that I do it, it comes with it. It's different, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know what I'm saying? I could see, even see rock stars at times or churchy at some times. The way I'm able to develop my own flows, I can genuinely, I can genuinely say that it's original. That's for me. And what sets me apart from others that feels like versatility. Because what I have out, yeah, I have a lot of stuff out I also have a song out called The Not. That's like me rapping. I got like his own drill song. Hell yeah, it's like this drill sound, you know what I'm saying? It's coming soon. It's a whole lot of songs. That's what it is. Right now, especially, you gotta be like tapping into the melodies, different type of beats and shit. Like, Hell yeah. And you don't know who's gonna like, who's gonna listen to that. Dude. Literally. Yeah. But he also does this shit, like. No, bro. How much like rap streaming is there too? If you're not versatile, like, it's like you're not gonna make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With well, him, yeah, I don't stick with one flow. Literally, unless it's like extremely different. You know what I mean? Like, bro, trust. That's why I even made some rock songs. I got rock and roll songs. That's fine. I got Afro beat songs. And um, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I get a little churchy sometimes when I was a kid. I got some gospel, some hip gospel songs. You know, just be getting like beats sent to you. Uh, sometimes, but sometimes, but majority of the time, or half a majority, I don't know if that's the thing, but half a majority, it's either from them or on YouTube shopping. So, yeah, that's what I was going to say, like, how long, like, what makes it, like, what makes you think, like, alright, I, I want, I feel like I go off this one. You have, like, a list of, like, a thousand of them, how do you mm. really just, like, choose that? I even got to hear some albums, like, crazy shit, the most definitely for me, it's the sample. Sample, buy a crazy sample. That's just gonna Is that what you're looking for now, though? You want, like, a, you want a beat that's, like, sampled, or you, like, you want something new? I'm looking for something that's just, like... Because a sample, I, I can see, like, it definitely helps, like, set, like, the tone and, like, pace or something like yeah, want to start going off the like, Oh, yeah. Okay. Now I know what you mean in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I would say the sample in like just in terms of like if the drums are like somewhat different, like you know how in some song in majority like a majority of the beats are out, just like the drums have a like consistent, you know what I'm saying? If it has some crazy, like on some different shit, even if it's on some like boozy shit at the same time. I can also go for something that's like on some Friday shit. Yeah. Just as long as it's like, like if I can hear the uniqueness, I gravitate towards it. But at the same time, if I have like a regular beat, I would really try my best to make something out of nothing. Like I'm an older beat. Like, yeah, that's all yeah. really the same people. It's just like, yeah. after I fuck with this one, but like, wait. I also fuck with this one. Like, how? People get confused there and then they just don't want to do nothing. Type like shit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> they want to do nothing. They're on my ass consistently. Like, that's good to have people around you. Bro, I swear doing the same shit as you like that, that, you know, be on your ass like that. Yeah, you kick your own. It's a blessing, bro. It's a blessing, bro. Like, I'm, there's songs that I done made, I only made the hook. I'd be like, I, I don't want to do it. They didn't cuss me out. Like, yeah, all right, you're not doing that. Finish it. You came up for your baby. You leave this shit like that. No, no. You guys be threatening me. So even though you've been doing it for like a little while, what's been the most like rewarding part of releasing like, your first music? Like, you still like, starting like stages and just, like were there any like unexpected challenges? Yeah, I feel like um, with this music shit, like what was an unexpected challenge was just like getting people to actually listen to it. 
know what I mean? Cause, that's also most rewarding. Yeah. Once you finally get people to listen to you and what like, like I'll say like the shows. Remember I did shows? That, like just how many phones and people that weren't even at the table just came up to the table in my face. That shows that like, okay, I'm doing something. Like, you feel me? Like, I don't know. Not everyone's just gonna say, all right, I record, but like they record for a reason. Yeah. You know? And then like, like I said, at the same time, it's rewarding, but at the same time, it's like when you go to people, you're like, they're like, what you do? Uh, I make music. Okay, okay, what else? There shouldn't be a what else. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? So that's, you know, for that. Yeah, you know, so that's probably like one of the hardest things to deal with that. But like, again, like you said, probably the most rewarding world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like people are really tapping in, like, they're listening to like, what you're saying, they understand you. Like, the most rewarding. Same thing with us editing a video. Almost spent hours editing a video and it flops. Yeah. Just goes, even though you get like maybe 30, 70 views, like people that still tapped in. That's the only thing. A flop, a flop for us is like 70 views. Think about it. And that for, you know, other people could be like, oh shit. That's real shit. Yeah, real shit. Yeah, like, you gotta think about it like that too sometimes. That's how I try to think of it. Because like, I think about it like our average video, probably what? Yeah. 500 range. That I mean, like most people who just start off doing something like us, like they their average I would say probably around a hundred. Yeah. Like you know, you kinda gotta look at it like that, like gotta look at your competition, you gotta look at other people who are trying to do the same shit as you and like see what you can do differently. So what what was your like push into all this? Like what really got you to be like I know like like listening, like being uh, trying, and I want to like, I want to go full fledged into this. Like. Okay, okay, so, all right, so when I started making music, it was off of like, like some headphones, yeah. Yeah. broken PS4 headphones with, with my sister's iPad laptop. You know what I'm saying? It's literally just bullshit. I was a vocational twice to sneak out of class and go to the studio, try to master a little engineer. You know what I mean? But like I said, my cousin Mikey was making music. And I'm hearing people in my school about this music. So I'm just like, all right, man. All right. So then, all right, man, I got you, bro. I'm related. Like, you know what I mean? I gotta do, if he, bro, if he, me and him have been like, we're only 11 days apart. So it's like, oh, shit. Me and, him, bro, there, bro, me and him has always been like, all right, we're doing this together. All right. You doing that? I'm doing that. Fuck you, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> Is that like that friendly competition? Literally. Yeah. Well, he said it like that, Mike. Like, straight up like that, bro. Yeah. Fuck you, bro. I love you. You're my auntie kid. You know what I mean? So, like, I almost definitely say the part that moved me in, because when I went to Nichols, like I said, I was still recording on my laptop. I hadn't never really been to a studio. I wasn't really serious about the music. Like, probably at this time, I only had like one song drop. Are like, you still messing around with like, Just messing around trying to get right. This guy, Luke Woods, his first song, um, uh, I, li I literally recorded the first version of it in the room. And then he was like, okay, I'm going to go take this to the studio. I'm like, studio? Okay, he's taking the fucking first step. Yeah. That's a step I didn't take yet. So then as I'm going, we went to our friend, you know what I'm saying, his name's Wes. He made the song and then I'm just like, okay. I, it now, I, now it, it's crazy. Yeah. It sounds better. Quality, everything. And I'm seeing Mikey did it. He's doing it. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I have to. If I don't, I'm bitch. It's like an inner calling, bro. Literally, bro. <laughs> and I, and I, I'm like, bro, I've been working on this like by myself for a while. Like, I ought to try to, you know, what I'm saying, take the next level. And that's what happened. And I kept going to the studio, but then at some point, I wasn't like. What I was hearing for myself wasn't really what I imagined. Yeah. So then I went to another producer. Okay, he was gonna be right a little bit. All right, let me try something different. I went to somebody who I thought was that guy, but then I'm just like, there's still something, something missing. missing. Something I'm telling you, I went to him, and like the way it was was like, in his engineering, he was already established, but he was still working to get even more better. Whereas I'm like he was here with the recorder, so I'm here with the music too. Yeah. So as he's still climbing to get up, I'm still climbing with him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or at least like on his coat. I'm trying to 
know what I'm saying? At the same time, he's bad. He could be passing down knowledge. Like he he most definitely was. Like, he gave me a lot of game. Bro, Dior gave me a lot of game over these last two years, and that's something like I, I'll never take for granted. You know? That just goes to show, like, you try one time, it, it's not what you want, like, what you expected. Like, that doesn't mean just stop. You got to keep going. Like, you got to keep trying, working with different people. But, like, that's, that's part of the grind. It's awesome. Tell Different times I was like, damn, I, like, I don't think music should be. Spending too much money on this shit, it's not going nowhere. You just gotta keep going. Cause this time last year, bro, I would have never thought we'd be up in here doing shit like this, you know? Well, then that goes into like speaking about like performing, like getting your face out there. Like, what has been your like experience with performing that? Um, my experience has been. Like, overall experience. I'll say it's been lit. I ain't gonna lie. Cause like, even when it's like, Cause don't get it fucked up. It's not like we performing at Coachella, but like no, the shows that we at, you know what I'm saying? Like even when it's uh, like a, renew, a small that. crowd, the fact that you can get the most or damn near all of that crowd to get him, and then when you go to a bigger mm -hmm. stage, like we don't perform at Bridgewater State University, you know what I'm saying? You are right. So it's like those bigger crowds get up for it too. So then, like that's that's just just amazing. Like, the feel you get from it is like you feel like. The rock on some rock star shit. At first, it's like getting a little kind of nervous. Like, why the fuck? Like, everybody looking at me and shit, yeah. you know? But like then, once you start grooving, you relax, especially when you're up there with, like, people you consider family. Exactly. Well, that shit's you push crazy. It. Like, no one wants someone who's, like, up there just, like, dead, like, monotone. Yeah. Like, you gotta be, like, giving out your full everything. You gotta, you gotta act crazy, crazy. Because, like, if you're just sitting there dead, the crowd's going to be dead. The crowd's going to be dead right with you. You got to show them, you got to give them a show. Literally. Like, that's the one thing I saw, bro, like, I, I went to the Travis Scott concert at MetLife, and, like, he is just, like, a generational, like, performer. Like, the second he comes out, everybody knows what time he is. Like, what's what they're expecting, like, what to expect, like, what's about to go down, like, being able to, like, just work with a crowd and, like, move a crowd like that is... Amazing. Not only that, you feel like you're a good majority of them, you know, like it's their first time hearing you. Yeah, so but still, it could be their first, it could be their, their 30th. Like, yeah, no matter yeah. how you come out, like, they're gonna receive it how you give it. Yeah, oh. <laughs> no, my dumbass said it's back. Yeah, but yeah, bro. I should have I should think good. about that for a second. I wasn't gonna say that. No, no, that's, <laughs> so that's a good call. That's a good call. But um, how did your personal life influence like your music and your songs? Um, it influences it a lot. I think like because like the majority of my songs was like from, from real life experiences. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whether, whether it's a heartbreak or it's like you know what I'm saying where you came from, where you come from, the best place, the best. I don't get a fucked up. I ain't come from like shit water, but I did not come from anywhere pretty easy. You know what I'm saying? Nothing like that. There's been times where I didn't know, like even me, I mean, like as a teenager, times where I didn't know, like I, I didn't want to eat. I didn't know what I was gonna eat for, for. So it was like shit. Like being able to like thank to somebody who's not gonna judge you back, they gave a mic. It's amazing. And when it sounds good, they just like, there's like a meaning behind the music, like now, like there's a meaning behind your craft, like, yeah. work, like what you stand for. Oh like, yeah. So. I'll be hoping that people who like going through similar shit can like gravitate to it. Like really, because music. There's been times where I've been pissed off, you know, I'm pissed off, and just me driving, listening to music, just like. Oh, yeah, yeah, bro, dude, I, I think we all been through that. Shit, like, bro. I just want to be able to do that for, like, you know what I'm saying, worldwide, bro. Yeah. And that's it, like, the second you start traveling, moving around, like, your mind starts open, like, little by little by little, little, you start having, like, these conversations, you start networking with more people, like, then you start having, like, a whole different look at life, and then you can start making music, like, touching literally, like, every single emotion, like, every aspect of life, and, like, everything you've been going through, like, I, I enjoy listening to music. I love like listening to like an artist that like really like captivates you. You're like oh shit, like that hit. Like, like that's what I felt like, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what makes it fun. Like, like, no, I was trying to you say copy the hook, right? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. The growth from when you started to now. Like, 
Bro, I literally, on the way here, it was a long ass drive. So, yeah, four hour drive. I know, I, I came from Mass too. I came here oh, last yeah. night, bro. I came over with Swift Script. I left like nine, I got to his crib at like one. Yeah, yeah, I got here late. I had to. I, was, I just got out of work. That's crazy. Right after work, too, is crazy. Yeah, I got out of work. Packed my bag and bounced. I'll be on um, my business myself. I'm okay. Yeah, that's us. Yeah. That's right. That's money. Money now. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really right. But yeah, bro, I, trust me, I know how that drive. It was. It was. It got to the point where I was playing old music. Literally. And I, <laughs> bro, I played my old song and like. Just looking at it, even sometimes I'll go to my reels, I'll look at my very first reel and then look at my most recent one. Just like just looking at like how much better I got and just knowing the journey it took for me to get to that. It's just like damn. That's something like I can always say I'm proud of. Like, even if I'm feeling down with this shit, like this shit don't get a certain number I wanted to get, I can always look back and be like, bro, look what I already did. You feel me bro? Are you playing uh, like you taking the social media like part of this like seriously or heavy? Unfortunately, I'm trying my best because like, I was never so before the music shit. I was not a social media person. Before this, I wasn't crazy posting on social media. So yeah, like, still till now. Like, except for even still now, it's like we struggle sometimes with like thinking of how we're gonna promote a certain video or something yeah. like that. Like what videos we're gonna do to promote, like before we drop it and stuff like that. Like sometimes we struggle with that a little bit. Like, a lot. We don't promote as much as we should. It's like well, on social media is a whole different like aspect now. Like, Ball, but like, not present on it, like, first of all, you could grow crazy, like, yeah. post something and you don't know who it's gonna take. Like, it's just, with it. social media, with, like, algorithms now these days and everything, you just gotta know how to play it, right, too. Like, honestly, most of the time, it's like you're playing a game, bro. Like, when you're posting shit, it's the algorithm. You gotta post a certain amount of videos every, like, a certain amount of videos each day, every day. Like, it's just... Yeah, so trust me, I feel you on like the social media shit. Like, that's I feel like what we're liking a little bit. How do you go about like making music videos? Shit. De Niro shot that motherfucker. That's my cameraman right there. Like this guy. Like after I found Virtue, don't get fucked up. Virtue is crazy. He shot my first music video. And that shit was my first music video I made with Luke. Even the first one I shot, my first double one. You feel me? I remember around my birthday, it was a situation where I couldn't get nobody available. Yeah. And then you I think people would be jumping. That, it's because my birthday's July 5th, so uh, like yeah. everybody yeah. done booked everybody for 4th of July yeah, shit. Yeah. So I literally met him in the studio, I think like two weeks prior. You feel me? And literally, as I was leaving, he was walking in. So I got his IG and I saw his work. I'm like, bro, let me, let me see. Let me see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I hit him up. He was like, yeah, we could do that. Me and him started texting back and forth. He was like, bet. We didn't even have, I didn't even have a vision for this shit. Bro. All I knew is that I wanted a video at my birthday party, gas station, like regular shit, regular schmegler shit. And with this dude, I made a movie. And so I'm just like, bro, shit. That motherfucker ain't broke the picture. <laughs> I just, so I went back for another one. Which is, I got more music videos coming out the way. That's, yeah, that's what I'm about to just that's what I say. Yeah. Next. Shit, I got right now. I have my EP put together. You feel me? Now it's just like we're just working on like perfecting, like in terms yeah. of like the mixes and shit. And it's about to drop soon, probably most likely before the end of this year. It's called Me vs. Mm -hmm. Me. This, this one's really gonna be something that everybody can relate to. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Real personal issues like I was talking about before. So and I got videos from that for that EP coming too. I'm saying, I just want to support you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I promise you, I ain't let nobody down. Trust. Let's go, Trust. Let's go. Uh, yeah. Alright, dude. I'm gonna be looking out for that. But thank you, bro. Of well, course. Thank you guys Appreciate for having me. Of course. Great trip. Great vibe. It's great to see my guys from home. Don't know, bro. It's been a while coming. It's been a while coming. Since I was 18, it's kind of crazy to think about that. I used to play football with him. Bro, it's crazy. Look, Albert, look, look where the fuck we at now. Bruno, too. Bruno, he was in one of my classes, Bruno.
Yeah, yeah, we went to Nichols. You went to Nichols, right? Yeah, yeah. Which, which class? Um, what's it called? It was some shit that we had in Davis. Yeah, we all got the same. I got a thing. I got a thing. I got a thing. It might be my economics Nichols. class. A real Nichols Alliance. Oh, it's such a mess. It's a real right. I just fell asleep. Not even that. I'm not even that. Bro, fuck niggas. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> fuck niggas. Niggas is weird as shit, bro. I do not like that school. Bro. I just realized it wasn't for me. It I really wasn't. Sales when I left, right. I've just been driving off that shit. Same, bro. You take everyone, everyone. You know what I mean? Everyone does that shit. Hey, I did find my lifelong friends in that motherfucker. Exactly. That's what. That's one thing I will say. Man, bro. Thank you. I'm calling on love, he's got no doubt. Fuck around in my slime around.